real quick before I get this video started. I just want to let you guys know uh, there was a few people that did it. Anybody that puts the company that I'm leased under down in the comments automatically gets a lifetime mute. I have said before I'd like to keep it private and I still would. At some point I'll put it out in the public but for now I do not wish to do that so anybody who puts it down in the comments automatically muted. No ifs, ands, or buts. No and I don't even know how to unmute people so other than that have a great day. Let's get into the video. These some sketchy roads back here. Up the mountain. I'm on 14 in Colorado because they closed 80. So I'm doing this to get back on 80 and it's going to be a couple hours. Oh man, there's a big drop off down there. I've been on this for at least an hour now. This is bad. Well, we got through the mountains, but unfortunately it's uh, snowing pretty good here. Still rolling with that 10,000 pound flatbed. Just got about 17 and a half more hours on the GPS till we get there. But that's how I'm gonna start this off. Damn it, buy it. All right, we're having an issue with brakes. Just wanna stop and make sure they're not on fire, but they are sizzling. Oof. Oh man, goodness. Oh man, I got it as close to a stop as possible and then uh, put it in first gear. Wow, that stinks. All right, so I think they're calmed down pretty good. I mean, they were sizzling pretty good. I probably wouldn't touch them. I'm gonna grab a flashlight. All right, this is one reason why an exhaust brake is definitely necessary. I definitely smoked them a little bit, but they're still pad lights. I'd say hopefully they're all right. So something's going on with the trailer. I know these are electric over hydraulic and the brakes aren't actually doing anything on the trailer. So we're not actually getting any stopping power from this massive flatbed trailer. I mean, it's an extra 10,000 pound load that the truck was actually able to stop it on its own down a 7% grade. So this isn't the truck's fault. Brand new trailer. I can't get the brakes to activate. Which kind of sucks, but there's not really anything I can do. So, unfortunate. It is what it is. I'm gonna try to let these brakes cool off, try make a sandwich in the meantime, and uh, then get back on the road. I were rolling. I sat there for about an hour. I'm just gonna rock third gear for a while. We're doing about 33, 30 miles an hour, something like that. And uh, just gonna, you know, play with the brakes a little bit. They're doing fine now. They cooled down a good bit, but yeah, it was pretty scary earlier. This truck actually stopped the trailer, and I'm fairly impressed. Today could have been a lot worse than what it was, but definitely definitely want to figure this trailer out so there that i got about four miles to go till i'm at the bottom of the mountain still just going to cruise fourth gear and uh egt's are like really low so they just salted so i waited a little bit after they salted and keep on trucking all right so i'm sitting here i just got uh fuel with the sinclair and one thing i want to recommend is you absolutely need a bigger fuel tank. Now, why is that? I'm using mud flap finally. I absolutely love it. I'm saving so much fuel. I pulled to this Sinclair and it's 345. For me to get to the next mud flap area is 180 miles, but I only had, I think it was 120 miles till I ran out of fuel. So the problem is I have to now fill up at Sinclair for 345 when I could have filled up a bigger tank for 275. It's a huge difference when you have a 60 gallon over a 35 gallon. So what I did was I put $25 in, just enough, like six or seven gallons, something like that, just enough to get me there. And then I will now fill up when I get there because 
it says now that'll probably update but it says 161 miles till I uh, till empty which that'll update when I start driving now it's going back up at 163 now so there's that absolutely get a bigger fuel tank uh, we did get the brake issue fixed so there's that now before I get into the rest of this video I do want to go over some things future plans some bad news good news you know yada yada okay so before I start this section, some, some someone's going to think this is funny. I obviously put how much I make on these loads and, you know, yada yada, how low my overhead is, yada yada. If you look at my overhead and you see what I'm making, I have three kids and a house to pay for and all that, you know, whatever. We own the place and we just don't own the land. We're working for land. Now, with that being said, I was actually, I have the money to go out and buy a the trailer that I want. It's a 53 foot wedge. I wanna get a the center rail on it so I can pull two trailers on top of it. Uh, if it's a triaxle, I'll derate it to 17K, but I definitely wanted a 53 foot wedge trailer with a center rail and a winch so that I could pull two trailers at the same time or three cars or it, it fits my market, it fits what I want to do. And it still keeps me non-CDL, which yes, I will go get it. I probably will end up going and getting a CDL eventually, but for now I will not. Now, here's the downside, because obviously I had a bunch of plans this summer. I was gonna get a trailer. The plan was to get another truck, not as a permanent truck to use, but like a backup truck. I, wanted to, I do wanna get the truck painted. I still think we're gonna do that. But come Tuesday, I have a little over $12,000 going out the door in cash. Cold hard, there's no way to get a loan for it, none of that. $12,000 is going out the door. Uh, for, I don't wanna get into details, I just wanna say that this was from a previous business venture many years ago. I think at this point it's been like two and a half years that this has been dragging on. I'm already into this $20,000, and $12,000 is going out Tuesday, and then another $12,000 is going out within the next six months. So, with that being said, that definitely put a damper on plans. I'm not broke. I still have money to keep running. Don't get me wrong, I'm not happy about losing $12,000 to this, but after that goes, I'll be into it about 32,000 and then another 12,000, 44,000 plus other miscellaneous fees. So I'm gonna be into it about I would say forty six to fifty thousand dollars by the time this is done. So hopefully this year is the last year of that. And then at the end of the year, I do want to buy a trailer. I was planning on getting one this summer. Unfortunately, that's not going to be possible right now for me to go and come up with all the money. I'm going to have to recoup something fierce. Like I said, I still have enough money to keep running and keep repairing things, but I just need to be extremely diligent with the cash that I do have. So and also need to make sure that the family is taken care of we are keeping most of the personal stuff out of it. I just wanted to bring this to your attention. With that being said, I'm gonna get back on the road and uh, I'm gonna go to this mud flap spot and fill up for the 271 it is. By the way, referral code is in the description for mud flap. Go sign up for it. I got load miser in on it. It definitely saves a lot of money. I'm gonna tell you that. It's been saving me in between 15 cents a gallon and 65 cents a gallon. Most of the time it's in between 30 and 50 cents. So. If you have a bigger fuel tank and you can go from one stop to the next, I'm telling you to do it because it is well worth it. I would never tell you guys to do something that I would not do, but mud flap is totally worth it. That fuel stop literally put me up to 178 miles till empty with 176 miles until I get there. The bigger tank is worth it and will pay for itself real fast, especially when you're pulling big stuff and you're only running a 35 gallon tank. I'll only get 200 miles to a tank when I drive 700 miles in a day. Not only does that save you time off your logbook, that's three times you don't have to stop and risk accidents and spend 30 minutes that you're not getting paid for at a fuel stop. Definitely gonna be looking into a bigger tank soon and an exhaust break. This weather is super weird out here. First it's bright and sunny, then it's snowing, then it's sunny again, then it's hailing, then snowing, and then we're back to this. So I have no idea. It's kind of weird, but thanks to, some, thanks to some careful driving, I got a couple uh, down to empty miles back. So it says 99 miles till empty, 88 miles till we get there. About an hour and a half and we'll be filling up for like 271 or something like that. There's, there's a ton of things I want to do and even though I can spare that cash and throw it aside, it's just not worth it to me in case 
say I total the truck tomorrow, I need to have money to be able to replace it to keep running. It's just you always have to look at a worst case scenario. So just keep saving up money. Now how I do this, I have a certain amount of money in my savings account, a certain amount of money in my tax account. What I do is how I decide when it's time to buy something or a bunch of little things for the truck, I will see how much money I made in the three weeks that I go out and I will decide how much money I want to set aside from it to throw at the truck and then the rest of it goes into savings or towards the bills. That way I know that I am not spending more money that I am physically making. It's no different than anything else. You need to be good at budgeting your money and that's just something that I've learned over the years. I was terrible with budgeting money years ago. Uh, I was horrible with budgeting money when I made my first 100K back in 2019, I think it was. So terrible at budgeting money. But I also started doing this when I was super far behind on all my bills. So anytime I would get a paycheck, anytime I'd do a load and get a check, that money went right back into trying to catch up on everything. So that was kind of a pain, but now, definitely way better now. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to zoom in, but that guy up there has his dog in the bed of the truck. Like, and he's just running back and forth from side to side in the bed. I don't know. I don't like it. I think that's cruel, but that's just me. Here's a good reason why you want a bigger fuel tank. My thing up there says I have 43 miles to empty. I'm climbing the mountain and my truck shuts off. 43 miles to empty, 18% on the fuel, truck shuts off. I have 20 minutes until the next fuel station. 20 minutes, 21 miles. Listen to this shit. Oh. Oh. I think we got it. Definitely out of fuel. I started it, I got two seconds moving and <sighs> mother, I don't even know what to do about this one. The second I can afford it, I am 100% getting another, a bigger fuel tank, because this is ridiculous. I have gotten that down to empty right here. I've had that down to three miles before, and it, just fine. Now it says 45 and it's not, so that's not good. I do not at all recommend what I just did, but I mixed automatic tranny fluid, diesel 911, power steering fluid, and a little bit of oil. But it's a 12 valve, so I don't care. It's running, holy shit. Holy hell, we're cruising now. I have never run out of fuel before. I've always been able to trust the down to empty gauge. And in this case, I was not. It still says 47 miles to empty. It actually went up since I put the fluid and shit in there. I don't know if it was because I was going uphill or what, but hopefully it holds. And I can, hopefully this is all downhills because this is kind of worrisome. So that was enough to get me up the mountain and now I'm going down the mountain, which is a long grade, which is awesome. I've made it eight miles on my concoction of fuel. So I, I really want to get an, another fuel tank as soon as possible. If it wasn't for the 12K on Tuesday and me needing to keep some in my savings, I would, probably buy one the second I get home. This sucks. Of course, right into a hailstorm. Great. I have seven miles to go. I guess I know what I'm gonna call this video. <laughs> wow. I was doing research for like 10, 15 minutes and everybody said, don't do it. And I'm just like, I'm gonna have to. So it's like, uh, all of it was cheap stuff. So it's not like I'm insanely worried. Actually, you know what, I wanna be over here. It's not like I'm too worried about it. It is it is what it is. Now we know that 47 on, the, or 43 on the down to empty, whatever it said, is uh, means zero, unfortunately. I got about three quarters of a mile till we're there. Oof, 20 miles on bullshit. Oh man, there it is, the sap bros. That's where we're going. 
it still says 47 miles still empty and that's bullshit why do i like mud flap look at that price difference that's a 78 cent per gallon drop get mud flap i wish i would have got that on film you guys call me crazy for pulling a smashed airstream there was an suv an expedition back there with a smashed airstream okay i don't want to hear it i feel like he was a little bit more unsafe than i was i wish i would have caught it on i didn't see it until the last second so we're heading to a loves it's about eight minutes away 4.6 miles and i'm done for the day hell yeah it's been a long frustrating day i'm <laughs> today was probably one of the worst days out here but you know what i didn't have to fix anything so whatever i'll take it still enjoy it so the good news is we made it 537 miles on one tank of fuel plus 25 dollars bad news is i ran out of fuel so it kind of sucks it is what it is lesson learned i dumped a lot of things in my fuel tank that i shouldn't have but in this industry you got to do what you got to do because i was not calling a tow truck to come drop fuel off for me so sydney loves i'm done for the night i'm gonna upload a video all right, so as soon as I get some money rolling back in, I will definitely be getting a, probably just gonna go with a transfer tank because this is the last stop for mud flap before California, and it's at the beginning of Nevada. And I was only able to put 11.3 gallons in, so I absolutely need to get a bigger tank, especially if I'm going to California. Uh, probably gonna try to fill up at Reno, somewhere around there, but it's gonna get costly. Like, it's $3.25 here, I got it for $3. Uh, that's gonna be the next thing I invest in after I get a little bit more money back in the bank, recoup some finances. So, other than that, I am also looking uh, for tires, because we're getting close. I probably have like another 10,000 miles left on these tires, so I'm looking for 285, 75 17s they should still be a 33 inch tire something like that i don't know if i'm gonna go with mts again i would like to not go with mts but if they're far cheaper in a 10 ply i will probably just go with them all right so i know i asked last time but this time it's in gear this is with it in gear it has like maybe a half an inch of play of slop and that's in gear all the way to the rear end So that includes the transmission. All right, so I'm going through the comments in the last video, which you guys are killing it. I think it has 183 comments. That is insane. A lot of you guys are saying about the one-piece drive shaft. Yes, I am going to get a one-piece drive shaft eventually. But yes, I mentioned in the beginning of this video that how much money's going out. So that's why I'm not buying the one-piece drive shaft right now. I'm not getting the fuel tank I want right now. And there's a bunch of other things. Like I was about to blow like two grand, but one piece isn't it. Now, I am driving through Nevada right now, and the problem that I am having is there's so little fuel areas, and, and I'm trying to keep my fuel tank topped off, so the fuel tank is definitely a necessity. I think I'll do the fuel tank before I do the drive shaft, because I might just do the transfer tank. Let me show you guys. This thing's about to die. I think... If I get the transfer tank, this will sit up here and it'll come out to like right about here. So I will need to do something with all of this. Um, this is definitely gonna go, but I think I should be able to make it work. So, but I will keep this box. You guys can see there, let's see, let's top this off. It's 292 here with uh, EFS. Look at that, 16 and a half gallons. All right, well, we are almost in California. I'm sitting, uh, I think we've got another three hours and 15 minutes till drop off. I guess they do have a check station, but every vehicle must stop. So, interesting. California, California. Let's see how this goes. Well, we were given the go ahead, so look at that, shift in left hand, no clutch. Given the go ahead, he looked at me, he's like, all right, and I put it in second. I'm like, ah! Jesus. See if I can shift into fifth with my left hand. Nope, that's not gonna happen. Yeah. All right. All right. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, Jeff. Just gotta let me, let me do a little quick walk around. I'm gonna grab. Which one? 
Yeah, there's keys in that one down there on the bottom. Where are the uh, There's one down in that bottom box. I can grab them, and then there's one up top where the uh, where the engine's at. Yeah, I'm going to grab my gloves quick before I start messing with it. I'm going to look for them. Right. And this one is for the top. That way I give him the Kimber here in a minute. All right, Jeff. All Let me right. give you back to your honey. Okay. This whole thing rolls. Sweet. I hate California. You know, the land is nice and all that. And, you know, every time I find a rest area, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to stop for the night. But... California has no truck stops in the area, nowhere to park in the area, no, every rest area that I was gonna stop at for the night is just closed. Like there was a perfectly good rest area back there and I had full bars with 5G. So yeah, it's definitely annoying. Like I just wanna get somewhere and stop. I am 486 miles. Uh, we're gonna go have a business meeting with a new contract. They're gonna do an inspection on the truck and hopefully that means we can pull out of Oregon and always have loads. So that's awesome because getting loads out of the West is hard. Oh, look at that. Another rest area closed. That's three, three in a row. This country really hates trucks. It really does. Like there should be way more parking than this, especially out West where freight and prices suck and fuel is high. So that trailer was super weird. Uh, I went to drop it and we couldn't figure it out. And apparently you can connect to Wi-Fi, and, like use the control panel on your phone and stuff. It's kind of weird. I, I went to try to start the motor and we couldn't figure out how to get it to start. I put it in the run position. I did all this stuff and nothing was working. And here on the instructions, it says you have to have the connector hooked up to your truck and the lights, your running lights have to be on. And if you turn the running lights off, the engine automatically shuts off on the trailer. It's kind of weird. So I did end up getting it figured out uh, and moved out of the way. So that was kind of neat. So some things that people don't seem to understand. Uh, you know, we've had this debate about the new truck, the old truck thing. And one main reason, something to think about is just because you can afford something doesn't mean you have to go out and spend that. I have lived my life no matter how much money I have, no matter how much is saved in the bank, I try to spend as little money as possible. That's just always how I've been. And it's kind of been neat lately figuring out the whole stock market thing. I've been watching it and learning it and figuring out when to buy, when to sell, when to, like just, just figuring all of that stuff out. So my logic was I've always wanted, like I, my end goal would be, you know, a, a nice double wide trailer, a nice plot of land, and you know, three or $400,000 in the bank is, you know, a healthy goal for me. And even when that does happen, I'm still gonna be running this truck. Doesn't matter. I've wanted to get rich. Obviously that's not gonna happen with just trucking. I can tell you that now. Yes, it's decent money, but you're not gonna get rich off of it. So I've been playing the hell out of stocks, watching it go up and down all day, figuring out when to buy, when to sell and whatnot. And when the stock goes low, and you think that you're losing a lot of money, don't sell, buy more. And I've been playing that lately and it's really been helping out and it's definitely gonna be something that helps achieve some of these goals. But even, like I said, when the goals happen, I'm still gonna run this truck and I'm probably gonna have a second one. And I don't need much, I don't care. I like to see how far I can stretch a dollar, you know, it's just, it's one of those things. I've had $300,000 worth of trucks, okay? I don't want it. I don't want anything to do with it. Oh, I've had a whole fleet, I've had employees, I've had, you name it, I've pretty much had it. A lot of the stuff I didn't film because it was a business that I didn't really want to put online because I just really didn't. It wasn't something that I was really interested in. So now that I'm doing this, doing all the hard work, figuring it out for myself, you know, it's just kind of been a lot easier, less stressful, and I don't have to worry about somebody else crashing my equipment. I worry about myself crashing my equipment. After uh, this $12,000 goes out the door on Tuesday, I'm gonna really start looking at the financials and just going all in on stocks, just going all in. Keep just enough to keep me running and 
just start all day, like constantly. Like I'm just constantly watching it all day. When it goes up, sell out, not all of it, sell most of it, and then watch it come down. I've been watching the graph. When it comes up, I know that it's a constant flowing movement. So that's basically my plan. Um, people can tell me I'm crazy all they want. People that want me to get a new truck, I don't care how much money I have in the bank, I will not buy a new truck because they do not make anything reliable. And I'm not saying this truck's reliable. I'm saying that this truck, I can get it back on the road no matter what breaks as quick as possible. That's my rant there. Tell me how you feel about that in the comments. By the way, you guys have been blowing up the channel lately. I think I gained like 200 subscribers in the last two or three days, which is just absolutely insane. We've got 108,000 views this month is awesome. I'm going to keep trying to put this content out for you guys. Probably going to end it like right about here. Hope you guys enjoyed. I appreciate every single one of you. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys in the next one. Safe travels. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Appreciate you. Have a good one.